Hey, this is the Quantum Leap Podcast, and tonight on the show, we're really excited to have a special guest with us. Uh, we have Jamie Jackson, uh, who wrote the song Travelling On uh, from the latest episode, Fellow Travellers. Jamie, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're definitely going to want to talk about the song and uh, the background behind that and your experiences uh, on the show. Um, but perhaps first you could give us a little bit of background and, and talk us through your career so far and what's, what, what have been the highlights and what's, what's got you to this, uh, this point writing songs for TV? Yeah, well, um, my husband and I are, are partners and we were um, making records as singer-songwriters and um, a lot of the songs were being licensed for film and TV. So, you know, when you hear a popular song in the background that isn't score, um, we call them needle drops. We were getting a lot of those. And there was a creator um, on a show called Scrubs, Bill Lawrence. He had placed a lot of our music on that series and he had an upcoming series and he was looking for a composer. And so he had us audition and we auditioned together and um, they gave about 10 composers a shot and they gave us all numbers um, so that nobody, you know, people had their friends or people they'd worked with in the past. Um, they just wanted it to be completely unbiased selection. And we ended up, that's how we got our first job composing for TV and film. And so we've done that for 12 years now. And then in between projects, we'll write songs, um, and make albums as singer songwriters and produce and, uh, produce other songwriters and we get hired to do songs, um, for series like Quantum Leap. So, um, yeah, so I didn't realize you did a bit of both because I, I kind of, um, during research for this, I went back uh, as far as I could and I found your work as Hotter's Son and that mm -hmm. seemed to also be um, TV and film music as opposed to something that you'd done yourself that had then been licensed. Was that right? Or have I got that the wrong way around? No, it's, it's the other way around. Um, I Hottest Son is an electronic project. Um, that started on hiatus um, from uh, the first television series we did. I just wanted to have some fun and make music for no reason. And it ended up <laughs> getting picked up by some local radio stations. And uh, we got uh. signed by a label in Canada. And so I was doing that part time. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I listened to the album and it's, it's some great music. It's just, uh, yeah, as I was um, searching for the songs, I kept finding them popping up in TV shows. So I yeah. kind of figured it was the other way around. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Great. Yeah. Um, so it, how would you describe the kind of differences between um, getting an assignment for TV and working to, I, I don't know what kind of spec they give you, I guess they give you the storylines, the characters, whatever, versus just being able to, do something where you're looking more internally or from your own experience? Yeah, I'm when I'm writing and recording a song for a series or a film, I'm telling someone else's story and I'm helping realize someone else's vision. Um, and, you know, Dean is, is great to work with that way because when I, I worked with Dean on Bluff City Law, I don't know if you saw that series um, that he created, but we also, we did the score for that, but we also wrote some songs. And Dean really invites you into his world when you're working with him and gives you full access. And it's really invigorating because, you know, with Quantum Leap, I got a text from him on a Sunday saying, hey, would you be interested in writing a song? We're going to leap into the 70s. You've got, we've got two weeks to complete it, which means I have about five days to write it, send out the first draft. And they called me from the writer's room. So as they were writing the episode, I was also writing the song. And he invites you right in, you know, um, a lot of, showrunners and executive producers don't do that but he makes the time and then that helps your instincts 
to hopefully get it quick. So we got it on the first try because Dean was so welcoming. You know, they were on their ninth episode. They're a well-oiled ship. I'm just jumping in. I, I don't, you know, I don't know the other writers and producers and I didn't have time to learn their language, their taste. And, um, and so there was just an open communication with Dean and the writers and, you know, they were still casting it. They, um, in the middle of the process of writing the song, we actually did a time leap in the process and changed the, we went from 1970 to 1979 mm. slash early eighties and went less. The first idea was to go more country pop and we went more rock pop. And so it's a very fast and furious process because, you know, you have to have the pre-records and have everything ready for them to record live, have all the musicians lined up. And, um, but it's always fun with Dean because again, he really invites you into his world, but he lets you do his, your job. You know, he, he's good at, conveying the emotional arc and what he's going for and what story we need to tell and also what songs and and um, energy was inspiring to him so that really you know it's very different working that way versus me just going into my studio and going you know what what am I feeling let me just let it out you know um, what do I want to say so um, that's how it's it's really different. Is there a lot of like pressure when you're writing a song for an episode like this? Like when I first watched the episode and I heard the song, I was like, wow, this is good. How did I ever miss this? Or maybe it's original, but I, I feel like I've heard it and it's a big hit. So is it like a lot of pressure? You got to write like her main song that everybody wants to hear when they come to the concert. And this has to because, I mean, the song really could make or break the episode, and it really made the episode in this case. Is that like a lot of pressure to write a number one hit, like even in a in a TV show universe? You know? Well, thanks for saying that. It's so much pressure. You should have seen <laughs> the playlist I got from Dean and the writer Drew. They were like, these are the songs and the vibe that we like. And it was, you know all of my heroes, all of the greatest songs ever written. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I felt a lot of pressure from that angle, you know, because we're, as a musician, you're always striving to hit, you know, get that hit song. And, um, but it, it was helpful that it was just so fast. Like I had to go with my, my first instinct. And as I was saying it, it shifted. Like we started with 1970 more country pop inspiration. So we're thinking like Dolly Parton, we're thinking um, Linda Ronstadt, Nancy Sinatra. So we were leaning more in that direction. And I had about 24 hours in the studio and I was circling in on um, a, a chorus and some, some lyrics for the verse, because you're also writing lyrics coming that have to mean something, that have to support this, the emotional arc and the, the storyline between Carly and her sister. And then it also ties in with Ben and Addison and the whole thing. So... Um, and I was, but I was, I was a little stuck, you know, midway through, which always usually happens at some point. And I get a text from Dean and he's like, I'm so sorry, Jamie, but we're changing the whole scenario <laughs> of the song. Like it was going to be an award ceremony. Now it's just going to be a performance. Now we want to do 1979, 1980. We want to go more rock. And I was like, no, it's all good. It's all good. And then that just kind of broke it down for me. I sat down and I wrote it immediately. It just fell out. So the work that we had done in preparation for the other direction just prepped us. Um, and I will say, um, I co-write a lot with this woman named Jamie Drake. I'm Jamie Jackson. She's Jamie Drake. And I knew that I wanted her to sing on this and be a part of it because um, I'm a composer. I'm at home. I'm you know, I've been at home with my kid 
through the pandemic working and she's been out still touring and she really had the spirit of, of Carly in my mind. And Dean has heard a few songs that Jamie and I have done together. So I brought her in as the vocalist and we'll get in the room. And so she was part of the writing as well. Um, and, um, and, you know, again, I just have to attribute it to Dean allowing us into his world and making himself available. And Drew Lindo, who, who wrote the, uh, the episode as well, um, because we were able to, we didn't get really any notes. We we're like, that's it. My first try. And it, do, it doesn't happen very often, you know. That obviously speaks to the c collaboration that you had uh, up front. Yeah. Um, not not to retrospectively add even more pressure, but you mentioned about the uh, putting the lyrics to the the, the storyline that's going on between Ben and Addison, the storyline that's going on um, between Carly and her sister. A lot of the lyrics also seem to link to the overall story arc not just what's going on in that episode just the whole concept of traveling through time yeah. and any pressure there as well just feeling like you're effectively creating the what i'm guessing is going to be the song of the season i assume that there's not going to be any more coming up so this is th this is the song that's going to represent what we're watching right now as a as a whole show that's exciting i mean <laughs> you know i have to give that to dean because he you know I loved that he came to me and he was like, the theme is traveler, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's really brilliant. You know, he conceptually had, Oh, let me tie this all together. Um, so that was under the guidance of Dean, honestly, who, you know, also it's always a treasure working with, with creators that make you better at what you do. And he's, he's definitely one of them. One of the popular things in uh, the Quantum Leap fan community is the soundtrack that came out for the original series. Is there any talk of uh, a, a soundtrack for the new series eventually, or, or, and uh, was there any talk about putting this on an album one day, or, or releasing it like that, like in the in the contracts and the paperwork? Like, is that allowed for already, or is that something that we, we want to hear this song without the damn actors talking over it? Yes. That's that's effectively yes. where you're going with this, Alvy, right? Yes, we want to hear that song. Um, okay. Yeah, you know what? I did bring it up on set mm -hmm. because I was like, you know, the soundtrack is so great mm -hmm. and the score is awesome. And I did drop a hint to Dean and Drew. It was like, y'all should really consider doing a soundtrack and releasing mm -hmm. it. I think the fans mm -hmm. would love it. I think in the original series, there were three times that there were specially composed mm -hmm tracks um for the show and 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 each time scott Bakula got the opportunity to just sing the songs and everything else stopped and uh, so even before the cds came out we got the chance to hear the songs so i joke about the damn actors talking over them but honestly <laughs> this song sort of becomes background music for a bit and then comes back again so yeah um yeah, I, I think there's, there's some unique value in actually getting this out as a, yeah. as a song. We're jumping ahead of ourselves, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, I think Albie and I are I grew up watching the show, so it's a real thrill to be a part of, of the reboot. In a world where a soundtrack does come out, are there demo versions recorded of uh, like the former uh, versions of the song, like the country Dolly-esque songs of this song? Hmm. or could there be well the funny <laughs> thing is is that the when we were writing the the kind of dolly version it was completely different melody but it had some of the key phrases that ended up just forming it just came together it just it made it was like okay it clicked this is where it was supposed to go you know um but I will say tonally the acoustic broken down version that the sisters sing at the end, it was leaning more in that direction. Um, so you do get to hear a, a little bit of how the song sounded in the other genre. 
do you work uh, with the person composing the score uh, for the episode, uh, or is it you work separate and it's just hope that it works together at the end? How does that work? Yeah, we worked separately. I've never met the composer. So, um, you know, the producers just do a great job of keeping everything fluid, you know, with their direction. I will say that um, the one of the cool things about the song is the musicians that played on the track are actually on stage oh. playing. Uh, the only, we brought in a different pianist because I wanted to be able to watch and make sure everything was going all right instead of being on stage. So we brought in a pianist, but um, the guitarist, the bass player, the drummer, they all played on the track. And I, I, I was like, Dean, can we please just hire them? Because then we know it's going to look great. Sometimes those on camera performances can be wobbly because the song comes together at such, you know, the last minute and people don't have time to rehearse or maybe it's an actor that doesn't even know how to play the instrument. Um, but Dean was very open to that and connected me with the casting director. And so three of the musicians um, did play um, on the tracker are actually on camera. And then Deborah Ann Wall was brilliant. I mean, it, that's not her voice. Um, right? Yeah, I'm surprised. Usually I can tell. Incredible. Usually I can tell, but I, I really thought it was her. Yeah. yeah. She was amazing. She blew us all away. She, she was really great. And then the sister that, you know, it's Carly and Jamie or the, the characters names. And, um, they were both really wonderful. Can you, um, just cause we've kind of jumped around a, a little bit and Albie was asking about the demo and you're talking about, uh, how the recording matched up with what was on stage. Can you just sort of walk us through the process of, of how these things go from just being in your head to being on, on screen? Well, you know, this, process um it was so fast you know the the demo vocals are the vocals that we're using um we and that was that was was that you and your partner jamie yes yes her name is jamie drake um and it it we felt like like normally i would just send a acoustic version and not put a whole lot of time into it because you know you get notes and you need to redo things and we don't have a lot of time but you know I just felt like we need to sell it we need to sell the it needs to feel electric and um you know, the first thing they said, who's singing? Who, who is that? It's amazing, you know? And so they ended up wanting to keep her vocals. And what we did was the only thing I didn't record live for the demo were the drums. So once it got approved and they said, can you make it a little bit longer? Um, we lengthened it. We sent it to a drummer because um, literally we had no time. And uh, sent it off to a drummer who I was on Zoom and we were just, you know, talked through the direction. And then um, we added more background vocals and things because, you know, there's background vocalist. So and then once we nailed the full band version, they asked for um, a broken down version. And the first version of it was a little darker and so they asked us to lighten it up just to give it a little bit more hope and we did that but we kept all the demo vocals so all um um bringing in the extra tracks and bringing in the backing and bringing in the drumming we, were you overseeing all of that if effectively providing them with a, a polished piece to use in the episode yes okay yeah 
So I produced it and then I went on set just to make sure everything looked great. And um, we have a playback, a person that plays back the track and all the musicians have, you know, in-ears mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I just want to make sure that mainly that Carly, Deborah, who was playing Carly is, is comfortable and good to go because she's, you know, she's it. What was the collaboration like between you and Deborah? Um, you know, uh, I'm sure the director worked with her and uh, she had her own ideas about the character and the song, but uh, what kind of like conversations did you have with her about this song and like the interaction between you two? The interaction was um, not a lot, just I'm here for you. She's, she loved the song and the first time she ran it, we were just, it, it was a holy shit moment. She's amazing. <laughs> like, we're good. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, very little interaction. You know, I think her and Dean really connected a lot. Because, um, again, it was it was fast. We didn't even know who the singer was going to be until the song was written. So there was always that chance that the song was going to have to change, depending on who they cast. So we got lucky that it all just kind of melded together and worked out. Uh, walking onto the set was incredible because they had, you felt like you were, it was 1979 at a concert. There were, you know, there was the merch booth with like albums made and t-shirts made and posters. And it was such a short amount of time. It was wild. Did you get to keep any uh, any mementos from that, like an album cover or a poster or something like that? I think Dean took a few. Oh, awesome. I think Dean saved one for me. Oh, nice. Very nice. You earned it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. How does some, the experience you've just talked about, how does that compare to other shows that you've worked on? Um, do you, are you used to getting to go on set and, and be supportive or are you usually more working in the background? It's both, you know, it's been almost three or four years since I've been on a set because of the pandemic. Um, I just happened to not work on a show that didn't have any on cameras right before the pandemic. And then the pandemic happened and everything I worked on was um, virtual, even mixing episodes. So I was so excited. I felt renewed um, being on set and, you know, just a reminder of how magical the process is and how many people it takes and being on a team um it was very inspiring um again you know dean is special because he really does let you do your job you know and um and so i think that that's why the show is is running so well and it's doing so well you know he's got a clear vision and then he supports everyone i mean it won't I was chatting with the writer he was working with. We were sharing stories, like similar stories on how how great it is to work with him because you really get to do your job and it's inspiring and exciting and he's excited. You know, he's an excited, he's an inspired creative leader. And so um, that's, that's, believe it or not, that's rare in this business, you know, so... I have like a nerdy question, um, like multi-part. Uh, what kind of software do you use to uh, uh, record and edit uh, your music uh, for TV shows? And like when you send it off to the producers or whoever you send it to, do you send just the mixed down version or do you got to send individual tracks in case they need them for different things? How does that all work? Because we don't know. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I use a program called Logic. Um, a lot of singers, songwriters, and producers tend to use Logic because it's simple but very creative. Um, a lot of the more technical uh, sound engineers prefer to use Pro Tools, mm -hmm. but I can use both. I just enjoy Logic. 
Um, when I'm bouncing a song for producers to listen to and hopefully uh, sign off on or give notes, I want it to be easy to download. I know they might be in their car or, you know, on vacation or on a plane. And so I bounce usually an MP3 that's, you know, a smaller file just so that I know I don't get a call. Like I can't listen to this. I can't download it. So I'll usually email, um, an MP3, um, to them. And then once everything is approved, so I didn't finish mixing, having the song mixed until they had it edited, you know, in the episode in case there were any notes, like, can you get rid of the symbol or can you turn this up or can you change this background vocal? So it kind of held and I didn't hear anything. And then I hear from the music editor who's on the show and he's like, all right, we're ready to go. We're going to be mixing in two weeks. And I just send him over um, stems. So I group like the drums and I bounce the drums and I bounce, you know, bass and guitar so that, as they're mixing on stage, they have control mm. of the mix. And then I removed like reverb from the vocals so that, you know, they will have created a reverb in that theater in the show. So it's all consistent. Um, yeah. And they take it from there and they mix it and, uh, and that's it. Thank you. That's inter interesting. Yeah. Thanks for asking those questions. It's fun to talk about that stuff too. I, I wanted to compliment you on the song. It, it's I, I know it, it'll be on my playlist, you know, for decades to come, like music from the original series. I think it really fits in really good with this new series and the overall Quantum Leap universe and the time it was supposed to be in. It just, I, I love it. So thank you for it. Oh, thank you so much. That means so much to me. Thanks. Yeah. The, the fans are going to love it. Um, it uh yeah it, it immediately I, I had a very similar response to alby when I, I was first watching it um that it, it came on and i thought this this is obviously an original original song from the 70s that i just can't quite place mm -hmm. and uh as i started to realize that it wasn't and it was specially commissioned for the show i don't know i know dean said this um 109 just followed straight on in production from 108 they didn't have a hiatus but it really felt like oh we're back after a break and this is this is something big and special and that song coming two three minutes into the episode uh really helped sell that kind of welcome back to the universe that's great because i know that's what they were really aiming for that so that's great to hear so yeah it, it's been great to to talk to you about everything you've done so far and um i, I know albie and i have learned a lot about uh, the whole production um process which has been fascinating um can you tell us What's coming next for you? Uh, where the listeners can find your current work? Um, anything else you'd like to point us towards, really? Yeah. Um, my husband and I are working on a new series for Apple right now. Mm. It's called uh, Bad Monkey. Mm. <laughs> We're doing that series with um, Bill Lawrence, who's um, created Scrubs and uh, produced Ted Lasso. And he's a... He's, uh, been on a bunch of things you may have seen. Um, and I also just released a single, um, with my indie. It's more, a little bit more rock and roll, um, called it was bananas. <laughs> and you can hear that it's hot as And, um, my husband and I have a composer website, uh, was W A Z dash Jackson. And we usually post about all the projects that we're working on. And also I'll plug Jamie Drake. She's an amazing singer songwriter as well. Um, you can find her on Spotify and Apple just under Jamie Drake, D R A K E. Um, thank you once again for your time. This has been a, a really fascinating interview and, um, yeah, hopefully we'll hear more from you soon. Yes. Thank Thanks you for your so time. Much. It was a pleasure.